Welcome to the world of the Transgo High Performance Shift Kit. In this video presentation, we'll show you step by step how to beef up your Turbo Hydromatic 350 transmission fast and love it. This transmission is about to come alive. To refer to the written instructions while you are watching this installation video, shows a typical installation with the trans still in the vehicle. It will help you install this kit with confidence. While you are watching this video, stop the tape often and read the instructions. The booklet has the specific instructions. Follow the booklet to the letter during the entire installation. During the installation, finish and review each step before moving on. When installing springs, follow the instruction sheet for customizing options, size, location, and color. When drilling holes, follow the instructions for their location, size and customizing options. If your trans is out of the vehicle, follow the lower half of page 6. These changes will improve durability. These are the typical tools needed to do the installation. First, let's road test the vehicle to see if the transmission is in good working condition. We just want to make sure it has three forward gears and reverse. Let's raise the hood and remove the transmission dipstick. Remove the air cleaner and put it on the bench. Disconnect the TV linkage at the carburetor. We're showing the most popular type. If your linkage differs from the one shown here, it probably is located down by the gas pedal. And you should refer to a shop manual for instructions on how to unhook it. Okay, let's jack the front of the vehicle up like this and place two stands, one here and one here. Now we can jack up the rear. When you're done, it should look like this. Please use sturdy jack stands. Before we go under the car, let's gather the required tools. We'll need a one-half inch and a three-eighths inch socket. We need a three-eighths speed handle, long screwdriver, small screwdrivers, regular pliers, drain pan, and some wiping rags. Let's make sure you have the transmission that this kit fits. This kit fits all the rear-wheel drive GM350 transmissions. The factory produced 350 and 250 transmissions, and they look alike except for the adjusting screw. Look up here on the passenger side of the transmission near the floor pan. Does your trans have this front band adjusting screw? If it does, then this kit will not fit your transmission. There is no performance kit available for the 250 transmission. The bottom pan has 13 bolts holding the pan to the case. Look here on the driver's side, close to the rear in this area, we have a governor cover. This is the manual shift linkage here. On the passenger side in the rear, we have a vacuum modulator. This is the right transmission. Let's get going. Let's go to page two, step one. Place a drain pan under the transmission, favoring toward the front. The transmission pan is held on with 13 bolts. If your pan bolts are hidden or too close to the cross member here, in 
the rear, you may need to remove the bottom rear mount bolt or bolts to gain access to the rear pan bolts. Pry up on the transmission and insert a socket between the frame and the mount. Now you can get to the bolts. With a half inch socket and a speed wrench, remove all the oil pan bolts except for one toward the rear here. If necessary, pry the pan loose like this. Then loosen the last bolt slowly and let the oil run over the front edge of the pan. Lower the pan. Look here in the pan. It has some debris, which is normal. Yours may or may not have a magnet to collect any steel filings. This one is pretty clean, no problem here. Lay the pan and the gasket aside for now. Let's keep going. Go to step two. There are three different filters. This brass mesh type, this nylon type, and this Dacron type. Now let's remove the filter. If the transmission oil is still hot, protect your hands with a rag. Have the drain pan in position to catch the fluid that will run out of the filter and valve body. Remove these two screws and lower the filter. Place the filter and screws into the transmission pan. Page two, step three. Have a buddy move the shift lever to manual low. Pull the wire retainer clip and remove the shift timing lever. The drain pan still needs to be in place to catch the fluid that will drain from the valve body and transmission. Remove this detent spring and roller like this. Remove all the other bolts with a half inch socket and speed handle, except for this last bolt here. Now, loosen this bolt about one or two turns. Let the fluid drain for a minute or two. Disconnect the manual valve link as you lower the valve body. Your intermediate servo may come out when the valve body is lowered. Don't worry about it. We'll show you how to install it later. Turn the assembly over and lay it in the pan. Go to page two, step four. Take a pan bolt and screw it into the separator plate finger tight. Now let's remove the other bolts holding this support plate to the case. Put the bolts and plate into the pan. Now we can remove the temporary bolt from the separator plate and lower the plate. There are four check balls on the top of the plate. Don't worry, the kit furnishes new balls and the instructions and video show where they go. Lay these parts in the pan. Turn to page four, step six, figure four B. 
If the intermediate servo piston came out when the valve body was lowered, that's okay. If not, pull down on this pin to remove the intermediate servo parts, like this. Keep these parts together and lay them into the pan. Let's take these parts to the bench. Clean these parts and lay them out. Clean the pan. Now we'll assemble the intermediate servo like this. Install the washer on this end and then the piston. Insert the spring seat onto the tapered end of the pin and then the spring. And lube it with the Vaseline. That's it. Lay it in the clean pan. Go to page three, step five, Look at figure 3A. Start here at the top right side of the page. Remove the roll pin. Now remove the spring. Valve and spring seat from the bore. Lay the parts out in their order of removal. Clean the bore. Discard the old spring and replace it with the new one. Assemble the spring seat onto the valve. Install the valve with the seat into the bore. Insert the spring into the bore. Using a pair of external pliers like these, push in on the spring and install the roll pin here. Before we install this next spring, listen up. Read this first, gear command. Gear command allows a shift lever back shift to low gear at any speed. This feature should not be installed in heavy loaded commercial trucks. Although the video shows the gear command installation as part of the regular instructions, the gear command parts and instructions in this kit are in a separate package. Only install gear command in hot rods, off-road, personal sport cars, and personal trucks where the driver will know that first gear can be obtained at any speed by moving the lever to the one position. Okay, in this vehicle we want gear command with the back to low feature for street or strip racing. It gives you greater control of your transmission but still allows you to shift either manually or completely automatic. This feature is also highly desirable for campers and towing vehicles. You can use the engine to slow you down in that tight spot and save your brakes. Look, this Camaro we are working on will be used for fun, either on the strip or the street. We want to be able to go to low gear at any time for quick getaways. We will now install the back to low feature. Here's how. Turn the valve body up on this end. Push in and out on the end plug until the roll pin backs out of its bore far enough to remove the pin with your fingers. Now remove the plug and spring. Discard this old spring. Install the new blue spring. Now 
Now install the plug and the roll pin. The one-two shift train does not need to be removed. Go to the two-three shift train and remove the roll pin. Again, push in and out on the end of the aluminum sleeve until the pin backs out of its bore. Remove tension by pressing in on the aluminum sleeve and pull out the pin with your fingers. Now remove the aluminum sleeve assembly and then the large spring. Disassemble the aluminum sleeve and clean it. Insert the valve and small spring back into the aluminum sleeve. Discard this old spring. Install the new tapered spring with the small end first. Now install the aluminum sleeve assembly. Push in on the sleeve with your thumb and reinstall the roll pin. Now go to the pressure regulator valve and remove it by pushing and releasing the sleeve until the roll pin backs out enough to pull it out from its bore. Remove tension by pressing in on the aluminum boost valve bushing and pull out the pin with your fingers. Now remove the aluminum bushing sleeve assembly and then the large spring. Finally remove the pressure regulator valve using a small screwdriver to work the valve out like this. Remember to lay out the parts in the order of removal. Clean the valve body bore. Then disassemble the aluminum bushing and clean the parts. Insert the two boost valves with the small valve first. Then the larger valve, small land first. Discard the old spring. Our car is going to be used for street strip so we will use the orange spring for this installation. Install the valve. Then the new tapered spring with the small end first. And now the boost valve bushing assembly. This is a tough one. Carefully line up the slot with the roll pin hole. Then apply pressure with your thumb. Install the roll pin. Looks great. Thoroughly clean the valve body assembly and lay it aside. 
On page four, step six, it shows the screen locations if you have any. If you can't see any screens in your trance, it's okay, don't worry about it. Some didn't have any. Page four, step seven. Smear a little Vaseline or oil on this side of the plate and stick the largest gasket onto it. Locate four check balls and install them on the plate with a little Vaseline to hold them in position. Here, 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 and here. Lay the separator plate aside for now. Refer to page four, step six, figure 4B. Let's go back onto the vehicle with these valve body parts. Install the intermediate servo assembly like this. Be sure the spring is on the tapered end of the pin. Go to step eight on page four and install the separator plate. Be sure the check balls and gasket are still in place. Place the plate against the case. Temporarily install pan bolts at the A and B bolt locations. Just tighten them finger tight. Here in step nine, file the support plate until it is flat on the side shown. Here on page five, step 10, install the support gasket furnished and then the support plate. Now tighten the support plate bolts evenly. Go to page five, step 11. After tightening the support bolts, remove the A and B bolts. Smear some oil or Vaseline onto the valve body and install the valve body gasket. Now let's install the valve body. Make sure the manual lever link is inserted into the manual valve. Look, this link has to look like this and be able to slide side to side with no binding. Push up on the valve body 
and install this A bolt first. Now install the B bolt here. Now install the remaining valve body bolts. Install the detent roller and spring. Make sure all the bolts are tightened evenly. Go to page 5, step 12. Install the shift timing lever using the new spring retainer clip furnished. Stroke it a few times to ensure that it moves freely. Check everything over carefully. Looks good. Install the gasket onto the filter and install it with the two screws. Go to step 16. Place the pan gasket on the pan and lift the pan into place while starting one bolt at this side and one at this side, like this. Finish starting all the bolts in a few turns. Now tighten all the pan bolts with a speed handle evenly. Double check each bolt. Make sure this clip is installed in the shift linkage. If you had the rear mount loose, then now is the time to lower the tail of the transmission and install the mount bolt. Lower the tail of the transmission and install the mount bolt. Make sure the vacuum tube is in good shape with no cracks or holes. The rubber hose on each end must not leak because of hardness or cracks. Reinstall the kick down cable at the carburetor linkage. Adjust it like this. Release the cable snout by pushing in on this lock. Now have a buddy floorboard the gas pedal. Check to see if this tab is against this stop. If not, bend this bracket here until the tab is against this stop. Still have a buddy hold the gas pedal to the floor while you release this lock tab. Now push or pull this snout away from the carburetor. This is how the maximum kick down is achieved. If you have unhooked the carburetor springs, hook them up now. On page 6, step 17, add 4 quarts of fluid and start the engine. 
Now immediately add two more quarts and test on gauge for full. Add until it's about a pint low, then road test. After it warms up, we'll check it again. Install the air cleaner. Page 6, step 18, tells us about our road test. While the vehicle is still in the air, hold the brake and run through the gears from park to reverse, neutral, D, second, and now first. Let's move the selector to D. and accelerate, checking for upshifts. As it shifts, watch the speedometer change speeds. There's the 1-2 shift, and the 2-3 shift. Okay, we can lower the car. Double check the fluid level. It's right here, just below the full mark. After our road test, we'll check it again. Close the hood. Let's road test the vehicle and check its new performance. Start with some light throttle up chips and feel for the one, two, and the two, three shifts. This will tell us if the valve body is working normally. Do we have good, quick, crisp shifts with no delays? Yes, we do. Now, let's try some up shifts at three-quarter throttle to see how the shift gets permanent throttle. This one is okay. Let's go have some fun. Yes, this transmission has come along. If you have a car like this, low gears, you could expect this kind of performance. Whether you are a serious off-roader, or a hunter, or a fisherman, or a contractor, this kit gives the shift feel you want. And the gear command feature puts you in control. Yes, you can have the gear you want when you want it and still delivers full automatic shifts in the drive position. We thank you for using Transgold products and look forward to serving you again with any of the other products that you may want or need.